Thank you, Magic Mike. Thank you for tuning in to this hour of our special On the Road edition of On the House. It's the Pacific Coast Builders Conference, our opportunity to share with you some of the latest and greatest in building products and technology. We are in San Diego. At the San Diego Convention Center, and this PCBC is just, as we've said in the previous uh, hours of the show, this is the boutique show in, in the country. Yeah. This is not for uh, builders who do starter homes. This is for the builders who build upscale. Yes, and it's These really... These are the products that are upscale. And I love walking the floor because this is the kind of work we do in our remodeling business. Exactly right. And so throughout the, the hour, we hope you'll settle in, grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, and share with you and your family some of the wonderful products and people that we've had the opportunity to have a look at yeah. here at the uh, Pacific Coast Builders Conference. Among them is Carrie Levitt. Carrie is with Associa Desert Resort Management. Carrie, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, Terry, you're not an exhibitor. You're an attendee. Yes. You came here to see the exhibits. I did, plus it's 110 degrees where I live right now, so the weather's not a bad draw either. Now so tell me what you do for a living. <laughs> you're in Palm Desert, yes. you mentioned, and and uh, we, our local affiliate in, in the Coachella Valley is KPSI. Oh, yes. And uh, we're proud to be there. But we have a mutual friend we discovered, uh, Gloria Kirkwood, yes. who is part of your team. Yes, Gloria is a very seasoned, experienced manager, and of course, we manage, uh, as our name says, Desert Resort Management. We manage, manage the upper scale type of communities that the builders are building in out in the desert, and she is one of those uh, managers. Are they building back in the desert now again? Yeah, it's great to see. Uh, for a number of years, uh, many of the builders and representatives that I had worked with as my role as uh, developer services uh, manager. Uh, basically, they lost their jobs. Many, of course, the trades went away, and uh, there was a number of communities that had a great vision, but they were uh, incomplete, unbuilt, and the residents were feeling a little bit abandoned. And now it's great to see that coming around and those residents having more spirit and hope in their community and, more important, jobs being created. Now, you're here for a very specific reason. Yes, we have many uh, builder clients that we work with uh, that are building new communities. And in addition, many of our older communities can certainly benefit from many of the great new advances in technology, especially with the drought and energy uh, focus in California. Uh, we use more water per capita than anywhere else in the state for uh, residents because of the heat right. and evaporation. So artificial turf, uh, friendly xeriscaping, low water usage, landscaping, uh, those are uh, good technology for irrigation practices. Those are all great things. Now so I you're here to learn more about what it takes to service your clients. Yes, sir. I got it. I well, that's that's what we're doing here. Yes, I sir. understood that Palm Desert Palm Springs is on one of the largest aquifers in North America. Is that still the is it still the case? Is the groundwater supply still plentiful, or are the folks in the Coachella Valley having to conserve? Are we going to see golf courses go brown there as well? Well, you're already seeing the effects because regardless of whether we actually have adequate supplies in the desert. Uh, the mandate for a 36% reduction by the governor uh, affects uh, all homeowners associations and individual homeowners. And uh, certainly there's a bigger push now for those golf courses that are on recycled water, which are not, uh, you know, mandated to have that same reduction uh, to convert, right? Wow. Okay, so everybody's trying hard. Oh, yes. But it is taking some changes, and some people don't like the uh, browning grass and the... Uh, Spotty coverage sometimes. Let's hope that it's temporary. Yes, sir. Okay. He is uh, Carrie Levitt with Associa Desert Resort Management. You tell Gloria that you stopped in to say hi at the PCBC. I'll Give tell her, her she's 15 minutes of fame. Yeah, she's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very uh, much. Nice uh, to meet you. All too. right. And listen, uh, you want to keep things warm uh, around your piece of the great American dream, perhaps... Uh, uh, manager utility bill where Dan Mays is with Cadet. Dan, welcome to the program. Thanks for having us. 
So tell us a little bit about what Cadet is and how it may be of interest to our audience. So Cadet's a 50-year-old company that's based up in the Pacific Northwest, uh, and we make room-by-room -room heating solutions. So it's a zonal electric heater, okay. um, something you can put in an individual space to add warmth to that space. Why would somebody want this? Um, ultimately, the biggest reason they would want it is to uh, either offset uh, a cold a cold room, a cold room solution, um, or to provide uh, the, the, just the, the basic need of warmth. And it, for example, in the morning, even in the desert, you're going to wake up, and in the desert, it's cold in the morning, morning right? Yes. So you need a, maybe you need a quick burst of heat. Uh, why fire up a central system to do that? Because you're probably literally sitting in one room, right, having right. coffee. Right, I got you. So this is uh, 110 volts? can be 110 or 240. Uh -huh. uh, the, that, this particular unit uh, that, we're, the, that we have here now is okay. the uh, Energy Plus unit. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's a, a smart heater. And so it can be installed in wall or surface mounted, yeah. or is it designed to be? Would it, you cut it, cut out the uh, the wall? Correct. You put it in the wall, or in the case of a, a concrete structure, we have surface mount boxes. We did this for display purposes. Understood. Um, but the great benefit you get with this heater is the functionality of it. So it has a fan only mode. So if there's air conditioning running, you can use that to amplify the circulation of air. When it's operating in heat mode, it's actually proportional. Is the fan AC or DC? Uh, it's AC. Okay. Yeah, uh, but the proportionality of the heater, what that does is it'll it'll heat the room up quickly at full wattage, then it will find the heat loss of the room, which is typically far less than what it took to get it there, and it will find that and, and decrease fan speed and wattage output accordingly to keep you very comfortable and use less energy in the process. So you won't have a big hot spot. Right. Oh, that's interesting. It has an onboard thermostat. Yep, onboard uh, control. How many BTUs? Uh, that well, it's. Uh, Wired at 240 is going to put a 1600 watts, so that's uh, what times 3.412. Um, 45,000. Yeah. 48,000, 50,000 BTUs? Yeah. Really? That's a lot. 1600 watts. 1600 watts? 4,800 BTUs. 4,800 Okay, 4,800 BTUs. Yeah, I was okay. going to say, wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So this, uh, I imagine, would be a popular component in bathrooms. Absolutely. For it's example. A, a bathroom is a terrific application for that. Now, this is not, you know, this is not like that unit that we put in that uh, little uh, apartment we built right. years and years ago. Fired. That was 35,000 BTUs. Right. And that was installed This is a small heat, unit. Uh, and it's 600 and square you feet. have this'll no expectations. This will do about, what, two, 300 square feet. Yeah. Well, down down here um, with uh, new construction practices, you probably need roughly four to five watts a square foot to heat a space. Four to five watts. Right. Okay. So, you know, that's going to heat a 220 square foot, 300 square foot room. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And yeah, how cool. may our audience get more information on uh, the cadet? Uh, Cadetheat.com forward slash PCBC. Wow. Ah. Forward slash PCBC. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, Dan Mays, thanks so much for taking time to join us here at the Pacific Coast Builders Conference. Appreciate you having us. Good luck to you. Yeah, nice, interesting product. Huh? And you can learn more about Dan's product and other products that we're discussing at the Pacific Coast Builders Conference. It's simple. Go to our website. It is onthehouse.com, specifically the show notes section, and have a look at everything PCBC. While you're there, don't forget for your opportunity to walk away a winner in the great bathroom makeover more on the house straight ahead and we are back and we are broadcasting live from the pacific coast builders conference in the uh san san diego convention center and i got to tell you this now is you one tend beautiful to look town around you, Beca because the architecture why, why are you looking because around because the architecture is i think so you're looking unique. around for the sign to think to remember no, no, where you are. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I just happen to love this barrel style architecture, don't you? Well, what I really like are turned um, spindles, basket you mean spindles, iron, and iron, ornamental iron spindles to yes. replace uh, tr the Me traditional too. wood. Wood is nice looking, but uh, if you're looking for a change to something that can really change the appearance of your home, it's taking out the existing spindles and creating a new balustrade system. The existing system. wood uh, yeah, stuff. Yeah. 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 And you know, what's interesting about our job is that being in the media and also being in construction, we get a chance in the construction part to buy products. Then when we come to shows like this 
in our capacity as media personalities, yes. we get to meet the people who make the products we use in construction. And we get to ask them all kinds of questions about it and learn way more stuff. And we're going to do that now with yeah. Chris Dayton. And Chris is with Leapers Stair Products. Chris, welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Jim. So I bumped into you at your exhibit yesterday. And for folks who don't know Leapers or a little bit about what you offer, uh, talk a little bit about it, won't you? Yeah, thank you. Um, well, Leapers, we are the local division for LJ Smith out here on the West Coast. Um, we just recently joined with them about three years ago, so picked up a new product line and uh, learned some new things with LJ. And one of the products uh, we brought in as the one we showed yesterday is our Iron Pro system, and it's exactly you know made for what you're talking about, cutting out the wood and putting the iron right back into the same holes. So let's talk about that. How does it work? Well, basically, uh, pretty simple. You grab a Sawzall, cut out your uh, wooden balusters, cut them in half, yank them out of the holes. And then this Iron Pro system gives you wooden discs to put in those holes. And with our attachment hardware. Top and bottom. Top and bottom, yeah. Okay. So, and it'll work either on an open tread or on a pony wall with the cap. Now, you want to listen very carefully to this because this is something, a lot of this, what we talk about at this event uh, is really primarily reserved for the pro. Certainly we can share ideas with you and trends that you might incorporate into a home remodeling project uh, and even attempt to do yourself. But what Chris is offering is a project that a lot of people are, are interested in doing themselves and the do-it-yourselfer can do a project like this if they're reasonably handy, yes? You, you probably even less than that. Yeah. Um, I mean, th this is exactly what the product was designed for. and uh, So you cut the spindle out. Cut them out. You expose holes at the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. and then you have a plug that goes into that that fastens with the screw. Yeah. Then what? Well, then we've got uh, attachment hardware, and you'll attach the top piece to the rail. It's got a ball that allows you to adjust your angles of the the handrail. Depending upon what the what uh, pitch handrail is. pitch is. Sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that'll swivel. That'll give you whatever adjustment you need. And then we have a lower attachment that's based uh, if you have open stair with an open tread or you have it with the pony wall. Right. You've got two different types of attachment for both with systems. With the pony wall, it's got a pitch. And with yeah. the, the stair, it's at a, it's a, it's flat. Hor it's a horizontal. Yeah, sure, mm -hmm. sure. And uh, basically, it's just screw the stuff back into the holes. And one of the nice systems is there's no centering. There's no drilling. Um, I'm more mechanically inclined, not much in the woodworking, but, but I even see it'd be easy to do, and well, I've had more enthusiasm with it that, as of late. The, and you've got all sorts. I'm looking at your catalog, and I'm sure that we'll share with our audience in a moment where they can have a look at this online, but the offerings are so broad. They're just beautiful. Yeah. And it's not just black ornamental iron. You have a host of finishes that are available, and it's not just ornamental iron. Folks may have an interest in doing something different yeah. in wood than absolutely. what they currently have, yes? Absolutely, absolutely. What's the most popular trend right now? It seems everybody stand with the craftsmen, you know, or they call it a contemporary, so it's a non-turned inch and a quarter spindles, real simple handrail, um, non-turned newel posts, and seems to be, you know, what's really picking up in the market as of probably the last two years. This is going to be a tough question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> what can one expect to invest in in product not not in in terms of of labor but yeah. because they can either do it themselves or they can find someone that will do it materials for them. materials but in terms of a a, a a just a a range for a staircase what can one expect to invest in products that's a tough one as a manufacturer i really don't see the pricing that gets out to the street we sell through distribution or through uh, stair installation companies so i really don't know what it hits the street at um, i do know just a broad estimate if you wanted to change out your iron balusters you know with our system you could figure on maybe twenty dollars per baluster for the iron and for the attachment kit 500 to a thousand dollars probably easy. will yeah av average stairs about 70 to 80 balusters you know 140 is big you know 30 40 is a small one but okay you can figure you know in that range he's chris dayton how can our uh, audience get more information on the product uh, well, you can uh, get a hold of us. Our main website is www.ljsmith.net. Ljsmith.net. Yes, that sir. That works. That's it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, guys. All right, let's make these stairs pretty. How about that?
I think so. What you got? Oh, well, I have another guest. You know, we were talking about... Yeah, you were all excited about this well, yesterday. Well, you know, I, and I am. You know, as I said a moment ago, we use things in the field, and then we come here and we meet the people and find out... That what we've been using isn't really that great. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So yesterday I met a fellow named Eric Vallander. Did I say that right, Eric? Vlander. Vlander. I'm sorry. And <laughs> Not to be confused with Zoolander. <laughs> and I was walking by. I was walking by the Henry booth, and I said to the guys, "Oh, hey guys, I use Henry products all the time. Oh, for sure. That's the only for many many. That's years. the only brand we use when we do anything on a roof. Mm. And I said, uh, I have. I used a." a just a few days, a few weeks ago, I used a roof mastic. They said, we don't have a roof mastic. Okay, so we argued about that for a while, and I found out it wasn't a roof mastic. It was a roof patch, so I don't know the terminology, right? Got so it. anyway, Bill, I mean, excuse me, Eric shows me this very new product, which is something like, you it's know. It's a house wrap. Well, you know, we started with building paper. Correct. 15-pound felt. Then there were people who wanted two layers of 15-pound felt. Then there were people who wanted a layer of 30-pound felt. And then Tyvek came out. And then all kinds of Tyvek-like products came out. And now, Henry has come out with a game changer. And Eric, I would really like you to tell us all about your new product. I appreciate that. So it's Blue Skin VP100. Uh, it's a product that's basically a self-adhered air bearer. That's a waterproofing membrane. So it's 33 perms. And no staples. No staples. Uh, no that staples. That appeals to me. So it's a peel and stick product, I Correct. saw. It's peel and stick. It's four feet wide. Correct. So two guys with a broom handle through the roll and another guy applying the product a little bit at a time, they can do a whole house in one day stuck on without one perforation. But we're, Correct. like the others, we uh, would be applying it horizontally, yes? So this can be applied both horizontal and vertical. That's what I wanted to get to. Because it's peel and stick, it can be applied vertically as well. Correct. Which goes to his point about using a, a broomstick, for example, and two guys and it's four foot wide, starting at the top and just using gravity to, to install it. Yes. Yeah, and that came from a question I asked is, how do you guys hold this 100 foot roll of material and put it on horizontally. Sure. And the young fellow that was uh, with uh, Eric? It's Connor. Connor, is that was his name? Campanella. Yeah. Connor said, well, a lot of guys who are doing this product start at the top and come down. How long has the product been at market? So Henry is probably the number one, number two producer of commercial air bearers. Right. So we took our pedigree commercial and started driving into residential. So this product has a like product in commercial called VP160, Blue Skin VP160. This is an offshoot of VP160. So we've been in the market for probably three or four years. In the commercial side, probably 12 to 15 years. I'll be done. And I said to Eric, I said, you got to come on our show. I don't think there are a lot of people who know about this product yet, even though you got a great brand. Eric. So uh, finally, I said, well, how do you finish off the corners? And they have a 12-inch corner material that wraps around the corners six inches each way. After you put the walls on it, it's great stuff. Very exciting. Very exciting. And our audience can go to uh, henry.com? www.henry.com. Terrific. Eric Vlander, thanks so much for joining us from the PCBC. Thank you. Thanks, All Eric. right, there's more to come on the house, on the house.com, PCBC, straight ahead. Oh, thank you, Magic Mike, and thank you for tuning in to this half of this hour of On the House with us, the Carey Brothers, coming to you live from the Pacific Coast Builders Conference, San Diego, California, San Diego Convention Center. My brother says, why am I looking yeah. up? Because I'm trying to find out where we are. <laughs> I'm looking up because this building <laughs> is just a uh, an oh. architectural The building's wonder. a shell. It's everything that's in it for the PC, PCBC oh, and all yeah, the wonderful Oh, yeah, I know. Exhibits. I agree with you on that. And sure. I have to tell you that we are joined at our broadcast location. And by the way, we want to extend our appreciation to our friends at Panasonic Ventilation for hosting our remote radio broadcast from the Pacific Coast Builders Conference. You may visit their website. It is panasonic.com forward slash ventfans improve your indoor air quality. Rick Canaday is here. He's with Insul Foam. Rick, welcome to the program. Thank you. So let's talk a little bit about how we can improve energy efficiency in a home using your product. 
Well, my product is a one-inch TNG with back uh, channels in the back to water, and what we've done is okay. One inch. That means it's one inch thick. One inch thick. TNG means it's tongue T and groove. Tongue and groove. Okay, and it applies to the exterior framing or shear. It applies to you would put uh, exterior framing or shear. You would put a couple layers of grade D paper. Understood. Fifteen pound grade D. Yep, and then you would put the insole foam, total wall platinum on on top of that. And the the back, you say, has uh, channels. Absolutely. Now, why is that? Because penetrations in windows, historically, you know, not everybody gets them flashed properly. And you do get water between the wall. And it will sit there and get dam up at a header or other places and eventually rot out the grade D paper. Two or three years down the road, you so have the water problems. channels allow for uh, water migration? All the way down to the weep screed and out of the wall. I'll be darned. That's the way it's designed. That's the way it's designed. What? Is this to be utilized in addition to traditional insulation between uh, studs? Uh, this in combination with, if you were to take, the thing is if you get an R value of over 20 oh. for a 2 by 4 wall. That would give you more windows. More windows. It allows you to come in compliance with Title 24. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. there, it lets you get gets points. It gets points, absolutely. Boy, it really does. But how about uh, jams and window sash and all of that nonsense that you have to deal with in terms of wall thickness? It's, it's not a problem. That's why this is such a good product at one inch. We've been able to come in compliance with Title 24 without taking the window seals or the door jams or the, or the grounds for the stucco systems out too far and hang too much weight out on outside the wall where you're going to have problems. Imagine it's a breeze to install. Absolutely. Just uh, take a, a knife and, and cut through it. Yep. You would run it perpendicular to the studs with the uh, groove down, the tongue up, and then put the lath over the top, rather it's a one coat, three eighths. How do you fasten it? Uh, actually, the fastening is just needs to be tacked up until they put the lath on top of that, and that's then that's the... Uh, Actual fastening pattern goes with the metal lap. So for folks who are listening, who are thinking about building a home, they'll want to look into uh, insole foam, total wall platinum, the uh, ultimate breathable 6.2 plus R value system. Absolutely. And the, the breathable part's the most important part because as tight as they're building homes now, oh boy, the water gets trapped inside and you know, you're having mildew problems and this will allow it to breathe. It's a Gore-Tex. It's like that TV commercial with the elephant sitting on somebody's chest. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> he is Rick Canada. Insole Foam is the company and you may visit their website at insulefoam.com. I N S U L F O A M dot com. That's correct. You're a good guy, man. Thank Thanks you. for joining us from the PCBC. Thank you very Keep much. Keep on breathing. Thank you very much. All right. Boy, lots, what an lots, interesting lots, show. Lots of wonderful stuff happening. Yep. Hey, you want to have a brick home inside or out, but you're not excited about the cost associated with hiring a, a mason and. Uh, want to try and do it yourself? Well. We're here with the guy who can tell you how to do it. He's Lee Pryor, and he's with McNear Brick and Block. Lee, welcome to the program. Thank you. So how are we going to do it ourselves? Well, the panel system is a 28-gauge G60, 4-foot by 4-foot panel. This is a metal panel. Okay, metal let's, panel. let's say it in English. Okay. They make a sheet metal panel that's 4 feet square. Right. And it has protrusions stamped in it that will hold special brick. So instead of being a bricklayer... You're a sheet metal applier. You apply the sheet metal to the wall, level and plumb. I love this. And all you d and 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 you can extend the sheet metal out as many panels as you want and as high as many panels high as you want, and then start slipping brick into these slots. Now there is a groove. Correct. In the back of the brick. Right. On the on the uh, angle. At an angle. And it the brick literally hangs. Mm -hmm. Onto the sheet metal it does. panel. And it not only hangs, but it hangs in a perfect location. Provided, Correct. of course, that you've got a laser line and you're putting this up so that it's right. completely Right, predicated on the proper installation of the panels themselves. And, and then you glue it. Mm -hmm. You, you glue the brick. You put you glue on the brick, correct. push it onto the slot. And then it's mortar It's in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, one question, mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't ask you when we saw your demonstration yesterday, mm -hmm. 
but how do you get the spaces between each brick just right? Do you have some sort of kind of spacer, or do we have to make our own, or what's it? The, um, the spacing in, in the vertical spacing. Yeah, yeah. Because the bricks are uh, actually can slide back and forth. Right. And any position. Right. So you could do a half running bond or a special Flemish bond, any kind of bond that you want. But in terms of the vertical alignment, the tabs provide alignment. So you you would simply lay out well, your I mean, brick. Well, I mean to say, how do you determine the space between the bricks themselves? Do you use a spacer? Usually by eye. I mean, you could use a spacer there, uh -huh. but in most cases, you just, just do it by do eye. It by eye. Yeah. And, I, and I understand that you could stagger the bricks and mm -hmm. put them in basket weave patterns or anything you want mm -hmm. because the bricks are free to slide along the channels. Correct. You couldn't yeah. do a herringbone. A herringbone would be no, no. something you'd have to yeah, uh, that'd be a little provide for by other means. Yeah. Why would anyone want to do this, Lee? Why not just do traditional brick system? Well, thin brick in general, there are many efficiencies. If you're looking at the totality of the project from design to completion, you've got engineering costs because now it's seven pounds per square foot. You don't need a footing to support the, the uh, full bed depth brick. You don't need the attachment systems. So the advantages of thin brick in and of themselves are compelling. But when you, uh, when you add the panel system that achieves mechanical attachment, that satisfies some of the concerns that uh, exist about adhesion. And it's quicker, and it takes the skill level now down to something that's, uh, the learning curve is very short. That's so you could train somebody, uh, if you can run a caulking gun, <laughs> You if can you can run a caulking brick. gun, you can install so that's, this brick. That's, yeah. that's the threshold of skill level. And now, this can when, be used indoors correct. or outdoors, yep. both now, applications. Do you apply the mortar in a conventional way by troweling it in, or, or how do you apply it? Do you caulk it in? What do you, how do you get the mortar in? The mortar bag, which is a, like a cake decorating bag, big funnel, ah. throw the mortar in there. You use a mortar that has some polymer additives so Got that it. It, it, uh, it flows smoothly. Uh, increases the adhesion to the brick. Got the to brick. right slump. And you have right. something that you offer uh, in the way of that. Uh, we actually product? don't offer the the mortar, but there are a host of mortar oh, pointing yeah. mortars that are sure. formulated specifically for that. Yeah. Okay. So so that's just applied. You, it, to your point, you, you don't want to uh, wipe the grout in like a tile <laughs> application. It's difficult to clean. So yeah, that's right. Uh, you want to avoid that. So then. I'd like to know in in terms of cost, mm -hmm. how does this compare to? Traditional brick per square installation. Foot. Okay. Well, let's sixty percent, seventy percent, ninety percent, one hundred twenty percent. What, is, what the, is it? What? Let me explain first that traditionally you would do a scratch and brown coat, so a, a, a wire lath scratch and brown. So now you've got a different scope involved. Oh yes. You've got seven days of cure time, so you've got scaffolding in the air. So the material cost of the panel is kind of a wash with the scratch and brown. So so we're kind of on equal footing there. But now you've got the savings uh, in the production rate. So you can put up 30% more bricks. So you could say that the savings would be about 30%. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And, and most of that savings is derived in the installation cost and the labor cost. Lee Fryer, the company McNear Brick and Block, San Rafael, California, in the Bay Area. How may our audience get more information on, on the uh, Brick Fast and other McNear products. You can find our contact information at mcnear.com. M-C-N-E-A-R.com. Correct. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Appreciate it. Been a Great, Great product. Show. Very interesting. Thank you. All right. Don't you touch that dial. Don't you dare, because there's more coming up live from the Pacific Coast Builders Conference San Diego on the house right after this. We are back live from the Pacific Coast Builders Conference, San Diego Convention Center. Thanks to our friends at Panasonic Ventilation for sponsoring our remote broadcast from the PCBC. And what would a building show be without appliances? And what would appliances be without Whirlpool? Huh? And here to tell us a little bit about Whirlpool and their fine line of appliance brands is Laura Chris. Krasinski. 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 Laura, welcome to the program. Laura. Thank you for so having me. Nice we to had have the you. opportunity to visit your exhibit here at PCBC yesterday. Now, Whirlpool is one brand mm -hmm. of many brands that you guys own. Correct. They are? Okay, so we're actually a global company, but in the U.S., we go to market with Amana, Whirlpool, Maytag, KitchenAid, and Genera Appliances. Boy, oh boy. Uh, uh, 
a fine line of uh, appliances. Oh, absolutely. So what's new with appliances at PCBC? So the coolest thing that we brought with us, or the newest thing, was our KitchenAid new design. So we have the first ever black stainless appliances black in our booth. Black stainless? Black stainless. So it's not a paint, it's not a finish. It is stainless steel that's actually treated and infused with it's the annealed. black color. It's annealed stainless. Annealed it's stainless. Black. And yeah. it's beautiful. And you get it in a built-in suite, and people are, they, they they're really, going they, nuts. they're going nuts They're for going it. nuts over it. They love it. Yeah, I Absolutely. see. They're just, you've got, your booth is surrounded. Yeah. It's yeah, no, phenomenal. we've had amazing traffic and great reception. They're loving the five-door refrigerators with all that, you know, cool space now, and Now, talk about the five-door refrigerator. French doors French, above. Yep, French doors above. Two produce drawers I that you can put those. at different temperatures and use yes. for unique items. And then you have your freezer drawer in the bottom that has three organizational You know, in a well. regular French door refrigerator, three doors, you have your top drawers are the refrigerator and the bottom drawer is, is the, the freezer. freezer. In the refrigerator, you have the quote unquote crispers. Right. Okay. And they're running off the refrigerator temperature. And how often do you get frozen lettuce? Okay. Oh boy. Now they've come out uh, with uh, two crispers in separate compartments with separate Completely separate temperature and climate controls. Yes. Yeah. No more frozen lettuce. I Amen. love it. All right, Laura, in the minute we have left, let's talk about the heat pump dryer. Yes, so we're super oh, excited yeah. about the award that we won through PCBC. Congratulations, yes. yeah, yes. congratulations. This is an amazing product we brought to market. Super efficient for the end consumer, but really a great product for the person installing it too. So it's ventless, ventless. so it can go virtually anywhere. Yep. Uh, you have a, con a condensation hose, so you need to drain it with your washer. But other than that, you don't have to break the envelope. There's no venting required. You can put it really anywhere you want to. Wait a second. Let me put that break the envelope into uh, into English. Oh, sorry. There is no duct required for this dryer. It does not duct out the wall to the exterior of the home. Amazing. Yes. That's because it doesn't dry with hot air. Correct. It dries by the process of dehumidification which is produced by the heat pump. It's amazing. So yes. it can operate on 110 instead of 220. And instead of creating all of that electric resistance heat, right. we're getting dehumidification and the moisture just drains into the washing and machine. And I imagine what? that the, the indoor air quality is probably improved as well by diminished humidity. Diminished humidity and, you know, and things you worry about like your vent traps and things uh, oh. being clogged or fire, fire any yeah. of those issues. You have two um, areas where you actually have to do some cleaning, you know, your lint traps, those types of things. But other than that, I mean, the maintenance is down and it's really simple to use. Is this going to be energy efficient enough to be a game changer? It really is. If you compare it to a 2004 dryer, an electric dryer, we're talking 73% more efficient. How may our audience, In the eco mode, yes. How may our audience get more information on your products, Laura? So you can go to insideadvantage.com or whirlpool.com and find more information. Thanks for joining us at PCBC. Awesome. Thanks for having me. More from the Pacific Coast Builders conference on the house right after this and we are back coming to you live from the pacific coast builders conference in downtown san diego and with us is dan ross and he is with savant tell us what savant does dan Sure. I'm uh, glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, Savon actually does a lot of things. We've been around for about 10 years, primarily in the luxury marketplace. We're a home automation company. Home uh, automation. That's right. Oh. So when people think about home automation, they think about a lot of different things. They might think about accessing their security or their cameras from far or from away. Um, they may think about managing their climate. They may think about playing their favorite music. Um, Savant is a single app home. So we are a believer that every aspect of the home should be built into your most familiar devices, your you Android. You mean I don't have to use 14 apps like I'm using now? I've got one for thermostats, one for lighting, one for the garage door, one for the pool. That's exactly right. You know, 10 years ago on our coffee table, we had five remotes to control our TV. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. And then Great Apple, analogy. Yeah, and then Apple came to market and introduced the iPad, and it really changed the place when it came to automation. And what happened was more and more companies came to market with their apps, and all of a sudden we went to folders of apps. So instead of a coffee table full of remotes, we now had a folder full of apps to do those different things in the home. As a single app home, we incorporate every aspect, audio, video, lighting, security, swimming pools, spas, uh, climate, 
all aspects of home automation into a single easy to use app that's personalized by the homeowner themselves. Um, so empowering the homeowner, because everyone's going to have different preferences about how they want to interact with technology in their home. Our app allows the homeowners to personalize it by creating their own scenes and their own schedules for energy savings, energy management, lighting scenes. Uh, so you name it, um, each user in the home can really differentiate uh, their home experience. I mean, you can create an entire scene. For example, if you anticipate being home at 6 p.m., you can have the porch light on. You can have the uh, hot tub go on. You can get the uh, air conditioner to cool down. I mean, the turn music on. That's right. It, it, it's really a limitless play. Um, again, we, we were we have the dominant player in the luxury market today, and over the last 12 months, we were able to introduce or, or, or bring that product to now it's really exclusive to everybody and not just the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Now, Dan, is this technology limited to the rich and famous? Or He just said I, it I, wasn't. I, well, he I just mean, said it wasn't. Well, w the perception of what is rich and famous is, you know, what's the system cost? If you take a, yeah. a what, 2,500 square foot home, 2,000, 2,500 square foot home, yeah. what are you looking at? Yeah, so... Uh, again, we're not a one-size-fits-all. We believe each each demographic, um, whether it's a millennial buyer. We get that. Give yep. us a number. Yep. So um, our basic smart host that runs the home is nine hundred ninety-nine dollars MSRP. Amazing. Yep. And most likely that can integrate with many of the devices. And how much is the programming to make it work so that it, it's usable? Um, again, that's up to the installation couple company. Couple thousand dollars, no, thousand dollars, couple three thousand. Hun hundreds. Couple hundreds. hundreds. Yeah. So you're starting at eleven $1 hundred bucks and going up from there. Yeah. And again. The dynamic of the house changes. People are going to want to add more features and more functionality, so the ability to constantly add and upgrade the system but is available. But you're talking about something that previously oh. ran $20,000. Yeah, the $999 price point that I just mentioned literally 12 months ago was $10,000. So we've come down about 90% in the last 12 months. <laughs> now, that really is something... And you guys can reprogram remotely. So Absolutely. you don't have to come back in the house. Once you've been there and you set it up, everything's remote after that. That's exactly right. And that's great. I want to buy a new television. I want you to code it in. Bam, you come over the phone. You put the television in. Drag and drop. That's and right. Drag and drop. New light switches and new rooms, additions, back porch lights, new speakers. You know, can all I be think done this is really exciting oh, news. Yeah, I, I think this too. is really an exciting takeaway from the Pacific Coast oh, Builders yeah. Conference this as regards to technology because we, as we visit exhibit to exhibit, uh, from exhibit to exhibit, it's automation with home security. It's automation with home Lock. safety. It's automation with door locks. Yeah. It's automation, automation with, with heating climate. and cooling. Yeah. So yeah. what you've done is you've taken it all together mm -hmm. and what previously was not affordable is now becoming more affordable for the mainstream. But I think the, the value proposition is really that you don't have to have 14 different apps and different devices. You can have one device. That's, That's very appealing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly right. User experience is the most important thing to Savannah as a company. This is definitely a game changer, wouldn't you say? Yeah, really. Would. We sure have had some great game changers on the show. Dan today. Ross, he is with Savant. How may our audience get more information on your products? Uh, the easiest way is for them to jump on Savant.com. They can uh, watch a quick two-minute tutorial of a day in the life of a Savant home and what a Savant customer experience is. Phenomenal. And they can reach any of our sales team or, or our thousands of authorized Savant installers throughout the country. S A V A N. NT.com. You got it. Dan Ross, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. And cool. thank you for joining us this hour of our program. And uh, our thanks to uh, Captain Dan, Remodeling Babe, Dave Weingarten with Second Sight, uh, uh, Joe Sands, our remote broadcast engineer, Rico Figliolini in charge of social media, and of course, to you. <laughs>